Hey y'all, Pi here, and um, may or may not have to stop in the middle here because um, somebody is actually working in the background. I've locked myself in the closet, but that does not guarantee that uh, she won't have to deal with my noise. Okay, sorry, it's been bothering me. Um, I believe last time we were about to uh, escape. Sorry. Like this is my first off day in uh, a while. And okay. And uh, my coworkers are still texting me and bugging me and just like, hey, Anyway, let's die horribly. Ooh, nice. My ears. Okay. That's usually a really hard fight. I don't know why it was so easy. Huh. Okay, come on. You got this. There you go. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've died in this room. Fighting that thing. I guess... The uh, secret to success was um, hitting it with destroy droid a bunch of times. Who'd have thunk? It's not a real one? Okay. That's fine. Oh, and if my audio sounds different than normal, I was kind of screwing around and ultimately decided to just move my um, microphone. So I'm hoping that this doesn't pick up a lot of extra noise being where it is, but I don't think it will. No. Anyway, let's go. Take the shuttle to the shielded Mesa and Telos polar region. I don't think that's the music that's supposed to be playing. <laughs> Statement. We have arrived too late. The target has invaded us. We must pursue it. Observation. They have likely escaped aboard the orbital shuttle that has been docked here. The Bay Control computer likely will have a record of their departure. Query. Have you discovered anything about the shuttle's course? Answer. I have managed to track the shuttle's movement across the shield network. However, the shield network does not stretch over the polar region, which was the shuttle's apparent destination. Statement. Dispatch a unit to the polar region with the last known coordinates and approximate path of the shuttle. They will not escape us again. <coughs> well, this can't be any worse than last time. So that's the hole in the shield network, huh? Doesn't look like much to me. I like all these added scenes. You've got to be kidding me. It's not my fault. To be clear, the whole inside of shuttle scenes were not in the original game at all. Egotistic praise. An excellent shot, even with the prevailing winds. I couldn't have done it better myself. 
field assessment. I picked up on the heat forms of the Jedi and her allies. Activate the mines and prime the self-destruct sequences. Relieved statement. Oh, Jedi, it is good to see you intact. We were concerned that shooting down your shuttle would damage you irreparably. Quick clarification. But now that we have found you, we hope that we can facilitate communications. Unnecessary addendum. And put an end to hostilities. Any reason why you shot down my vessel? Unnecessary clarification. We merely wish to cripple your vessel. Once we tracked your coordinates, we were able to deploy several droids in this location. Probing query. We are, however, curious as to why you chose to come to the remnants of the Polar Telos irrigation system. There is nothing here that our instruments can detect. Eager threat. But we are looking forward to extracting your motives for coming here when we place you in torture restraints. What are you assassin droids doing here? Self-evident answer. Wherever you try to run, we will be there, armed and ready. Rhetorical query. So the query you have posed to us is one we put to you. What are you doing here, we wonder? How many of you are there? Chiding statement. Oh, Jedi. There are as many of us as are needed to capture or kill our targets. Egotistical boast. And there are far more of us than any one Jedi. Destroy one of us, and more shall rise from the wreckage. Unnecessary threat. And our attack protocols are more than a match for you and your allies. Destroying one of you is easy. Wiping out three of you might cause me to break a sweat. Alright, let's hope that uh, we can do this. Ooh, nice. Whoa, why am I hurting? What happened? Uh, what you got going on, Kreia? Okay, that's what you're doing. That needs to level up, but I'm gonna leave him alone for right now. And let's just keep destroying everybody. I hear you. you. Nice. And again, this is another part of the game that I usually die on. Apparently, I never dumped nearly enough. Uh, well, I, I never got far enough in the uh, disabled droid chain of. Uh, <clears throat> uh, force powers. Oh, there's Bale. Beadur looks as if he was knocked unconscious by the explosion. If you can find refuge, then he should recover in time. Well, that's unfortunate. I like this music. It's kind of a trend with this game. I'll just like keep commenting on the music. Cause like one of the strengths of or one of the things that makes or breaks a game is the uh, the soundtrack. Like, if the soundtrack really fits with the mood that the game is trying to capture, then that really uh, is, is uh, a boon and a benefit to that game. And if it's not so good, then it kind of jars you and pulls you out of the experience. I'm sure all of you have played a game b before and you know exactly what I'm talking about and I'm probably just babbling for no good reason while I 
obsessively fill out the map because it bothers me when I have black corners. Do, 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 do. Suspicious mound in the middle of a frozen plateau. Lay down your weapons, and you shall not be harmed. Who are you? I will not warn you again. Drop your weapons, or we shall take them from you. Do as they say. I sense people come to no harm. I'll play along, for now. Why is it that everywhere we go, I end up in a cell? I mean, why did they lock us up? What is this place? It is a training ground for Jedi. What? This ice hole? Yes. It bears the semblance of an academy. But where are all the students? Curious. You've got to be joking. What is a Jedi academy doing out here in the middle of nowhere? It is a place hidden from the galaxy like the academy on Dantooine. But this place... Oh, Atris, you have been clever. Atris? It's none of your concern. Well, the sooner we're out of here, the better. Two crazy Jedi are more than enough for me. No one told me we were going to be dumped in a nest of Jedi. And what is it about this place that causes you such fear? What do you mean? We're in the middle of a bunch of Jedi. You know how they are. No, I do not. Not in the way you seem to. What? What are you doing? Get out of my head! Stop struggling. Let me follow the current deep, deeper to its source. Stop! Stop! Ah! Ah. With the fear is mingled guilt. It squirms in you like a worm. And the why? Ah, and there is its heart. You surprise me. I could not feel it before. Your feelings are a powerful shield indeed. Do not worry, Atten. If she is a Jedi, she will forgive. And if she is not, she will not care. You can't tell her. Please. I'm asking you. I don't want her to... Think less of you. I hardly think that's possible. Still, there is no shame in what you ask. We all wage war with the past, and it leaves its scars. I will not speak of yours, Atten, but there is a price for such things. What? What price? There are those who wage war and those who follow them. You are a crude thing, murderer, but you have your uses. You know how important this woman we travel with is. Even one such as you can feel it. You will serve her until I release you. And if I refuse? You will not. If you do, then my silence will be broken. And then, Atten, you will be broken. You fear the Jedi, and rightly so. If Atris learns of your choices, you will never leave this place. But whatever fear you hold of the Jedi, know that if you disobey me, that my punishment will make you beg for the death that has long hounded you. Wipe the fear from your mind. You will not find blind obedience a difficult master. You chose it once. You will learn to embrace it again. I don't know how you became such a manipulative witch, but why a vicious old scowl like yourself would even bother with me is a bigger mystery. No game of Dejaric can be won without pawns, and this may prove to be a very long game. You are a slippery one. Your thoughts difficult for even one such as I to read. I suspect the self-loathing that squirms within you gives you a curious strength. Your spirit, as diseased as it is, refuses to allow you to give up, no matter what threats you face and whatever wreckage you leave behind you. I feel you have crossed our path for a reason. Perhaps even you, at the right moment, may be able to turn aside disaster. If so, your potential is not yet spent. Fine. I'll be your pawn. But I still think you've got the wrong man. Perhaps. 
But someone has to fly the ship, and the force is a hard thing to predict. You have crossed our path for a reason. Our path brought us here for a reason. And now I know why. The past is here, and it must be met before the future can be set in motion. Uh, more Jedi speak. Care to explain? No. I've wasted enough time with you. Sleep, murderer, and be silent. I need no distractions. A critical moment approaches. I did not expect to see you again after the day of your sentencing. I thought you had taken the Exile's path, wandering the galaxy. Yet you have returned. Why? Tell me what you've done with my friends first. Your concern is noted. Your friends have not been harmed. They have been detained for their safety. I find it unusual that you are traveling with others again. I had thought you had forsaken the company of others after the war. Or is that why you are here? It was not my intention to come here, Atris, or see you again. Yet here you are. Perhaps you do not know yourself as well as you think. Regardless, your arrival here begs an explanation. Have you come to face the judgment of the Council, as you did so many years ago? Are you finally willing to admit that we were right to cast you out? The Council exiled me out of fear, of Revan, of me, and of what we represented. You sought adventure, you hungered for battle, you could not wait to follow Revan to war. The Jedi Order asked only for time to examine the Mandalorian threat. They urged caution, patience, and you defied them. So when you returned, you were brought before us. You were a Jedi no longer, and so you were exiled. I also recall you wished me imprisoned, or worse. There was much about that day that was difficult to forget. Your words, your defiance, and when you stabbed your lightsaber into the center stone. I had it, so I would never forget. That's my lightsaber. Indeed. A lightsaber is the mark of a Jedi. When you turned your back on the Order, it was not yours anymore. I have always kept it. As a reminder of what can happen when your passions dictate your actions. I have kept it, so I would never forget your arrogance or your insult to the Order. Whatever your reasons, I want it back. It is not yours. It is a symbol of something greater which you no longer represent. But I am not unsympathetic to your feelings. Leaving the Order must have been difficult for you. Yet you gave the Council no other choice. You gave me no other choice. I had no other choice but to go to war. Life is filled with choices. And when you are forced to make one, you have the Jedi teachings to guide you. I went to war to protect others, not for battle. So your choice was to meet the aggression of the Mandalorians with more aggression. That is not the Jedi way. Is it the Jedi way to let people be massacred? Every choice we make, whether we know it or not, sends echoes through the Force. It can awaken feelings, ignite passions, hate, anger, fear, where none existed before. By meeting aggression, by serving as an opponent against which the Mandalorians could test themselves, you fed their hate, their lust for war. And it sent a terrible echo through you. 
And because of it, you and those Jedi who met them on the battlefield lost their way. And you turned on us. Revan and Malak turned on you, not I. Without you and the other fallen Jedi to support them, to feed their lust for war, Revan and Malak's crusade would have been over before it began. Then you know nothing of what drove me, or Revan. I know you betrayed the Jedi teachings. All that you had been taught, you threw at your feet, crushed them beneath your heel. The Jedi teachings require we examine our actions. Acting without reflection is not our way. So you were content to let the Outer Rim die? For the sake of teachings? There was no guarantee that marching to war would have saved the Outer Rim. In fact, quite the opposite. If we had not fought, the Republic would have fallen. That is a fact. A physical victory, perhaps, but the real victory lay in... Th the triumph of pacifism. Surrender. Do not twist my words. A physical victory is not the only victory, or the only loss. If we had not acted, thousands of worlds would have been pillaged and burned of life. You do not know- If the Mandalorians had won, would the Jedi have fought them, or simply have meditated on what to do? How dare you? The Mandalorian Wars should have been your grave, and Malachor V is where you should have died. I did nothing to you, yet you hate me. I can feel it. Why? You see shadows where there are none, and hate where there is none. You are blind, as always. I tire of fighting with you. You lust for war, and you always will, and you have succeeded in distracting me from my questions. So answer me. If you cannot seem to admit the Council was correct, then why are you here? I'm here because a pretentious shudder stole my ship. Your ship? Ah, the Ebon Hall. It is not your ship. Unless you are admitting to the destruction of the Paragus mining facility. Are you admitting to stealing the Ebon Hawk? The Ebon Hawk is here, safe. Its records and Navi computer are being dissected to determine what caused the destruction of the Paragus facility. Good luck with the Navi computer. You're wasting your time. We're having some trouble with the Navi computer, but I think with your cooperation, willing or otherwise, that will cease to be an obstacle. If it is your ship, perhaps I should be questioning you as to what happened and why you destroyed the facility and murdered all the miners stationed there. All the miners were already dead. 
A facility of over 150 personnel, all dead before you arrived. A childish story to mask your crime. And with the facility destroyed, you think there is no way to confirm your story. But I will pry the truth from you, I promise you that. The Evan Hawk isn't yours, Atris. Return it. Again, you insist it is your ship. But it has had many owners, which I'm sure you are aware. You have no claim over it. Even if you did, the destruction you have already caused demands that you be tried and punished for what you have done. I've had enough of this, and you. It was too much to hope that you may have come here to finally admit the Council was right. Just give me my ship and I will depart. Take your ship, then. I don't care where you go, just leave this place. Leave Telos. You shall remove her mistress. Come with us. Are you all right, mistress? The exile reminded me of something. I had forgotten. Forgive me, mistress, but I must ask. The exile, I've never seen another affect you so strongly. Was she important to you once? We all have our heroes, and when we watch them fall, we die inside. She made a choice once, and I did not. The day we judged her, I stood in the chamber, and she was... She was so right. She was so certain of it. I doubted myself, but not now. She will never make me doubt myself again. But now, now I am tired. I must meditate. Of course, mistress. I will tell the others you are not to be disturbed. And please, do not exhaust yourself. We can attend to matters here. Yeah, I'm a good squish. Yeah, that was a lot. There's a there's a lot going on with Atris that we will uh, get to later, I think. Uh, oh, she moved. Damn. All right. Uh, it has been a hot minute since I've been here. And I don't fully remember the layout, but I'll eventually find everybody after I clean out all their supplies. That was weird. Yeah, that whole scene though makes me really miss having. Uh, Proper robes. Can't wait till I get some. Did you find what you came for? A woman from my past has made this place her home. I did not expect to see her again. I felt as much. Quite strongly, in fact. I suspected there was something from your past here, something unresolved. I feel we did not come to this place by chance. You were led here. This woman who resides here, she did something to you once. Something that hangs upon you still. Well, I wouldn't exactly call her charming. Whatever her charm, or lack thereof, you must deal with it. Unresolved events from our past can create wounds in the present and the future. And, more importantly, they can distract you, weaken you. It could prove fatal against the enemies we face. The woman here is a Jedi, Atris, one of the Council. There is a Jedi here, perhaps, in that you are correct. 
Yet there are no students, and this woman, this Atris, surrounds herself with those who cannot feel the force. Curious. Those who cannot feel the force? Yes, her servants are not Jedi. Their minds are walls trained to resist tricks of the mind. This discipline blinds them to the force as well, even if they were force sensitive. How do you know that? Were you reading their minds? Invade the mind of another? It is not something done carelessly, or when there is nothing to be gained. Atris plans to heal the galaxy, then rebuild the Order. Plans are fragile things, and life often dashes expectations to the ground. Perhaps students will come to her in time. For now, she is surrounded by those who cannot feel the Force. Aren't the Hadden students? No. Her servants are not Jedi. Their minds are walls, trained to resist tricks of the mind. This discipline blinds them to the Force as well, even if they were Force-sensitive. Why are we looping? Let's talk about it on the way out of here. Very well. Let us depart. Uh... Is that an okay? He looks out cold. He's only sleeping. It seems the journey here has fatigued him. Uh, all right, let me free you. I'm sorry, General. I must have lost consciousness in the crash. There's nothing to apologize for. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine, General. Even power has been restored to my arm. What is this place? Where are we? A Jedi Academy, concealed on the northern pole of Telos. This must be where I had detected the energy readings before, and the drain to the restoration shields. This room, this place, it looks part of a huge polar irrigation system, possibly planet-wide, like the one on Coruscant. I had been told by the Republic that it was not in use. Are you well enough to travel? I am, General. If you wish, I may travel with you, or join you at the ship. Meet me at the ship and prep it for launch. We're leaving as soon as we can. Very well, General. I will await your arrival. The two party members left are at Nancrea. Better will meet you at the Ebon Hawk. Yay, Bea loves me. Okay. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I hadn't got a lot of levels, apparently. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Alright, cool. Let's do the thing. Uh... The thing being stealing everything that's not nailed down. More response packages. <sighs> Why have you approached me? Hey, do all these women look alike? <laughs> not like I'm complaining, I mean, it's... Well, it's uh, interesting. They are Ichani. It is not unusual for their children to share similar features from the same parents. If you have a reason for approaching me, speak it. The Ebon Hawk, where is it? Your ship is stored in the hangar. Atris has given you permission to leave this place and not to return. I'm looking for a fight. I would welcome a chance to instruct you. I have been anxious to teach you many principles of combat ever since you invaded this place. Teaching? Oh, yes. We train extensively in various combat styles, and we have not had another target for some time. You may prove a pleasant diversion. 
I could use a good sparring match. Very well. Follow me, and we shall see if you have the endurance to learn the most basic of our teachings. This is going to end horribly. Before we begin, are you familiar with the Chani traditions? No, what are they? All duels between us shall be without armor of any kind. There shall be no restrictions upon our movements or upon yours. Your feet are not to leave the training mat during the battle. If they do, you will lose. Also, this is not a fight to the death. Restrain your instincts when we fight, and we shall do the same. I understand. Stay on the mat, no armor, no striking to kill. The fight will be with hands and feet only. No stimulants, shields, weapons, or other items. Also, do not call upon any Jedi techniques during our contest. If you do, then the battle will be over. In turn, I will not use our higher forms, for this is only an opening battle between us, a test of each other's strength. If you're ready for it, so am I. Then let us begin. Alright, so I'm gonna lose. Not a doubt in my mind. This is not a character built for hand to hand at all. Though honestly, I'm not dead yet, and that's shocking. There it goes. You have fallen. Uh, I've had enough for today. I'll be going now. That was exciting. All right, now let me put some clothes on. Jesus. And put my swords back in. Back back in my hands. I don't know why I phrased it like that. There we go. Alright, cool. That was fun. Um I'm gonna rob all your rooms now. Because I can. It's actually really rare in this game and the first game for anybody to get upset at you for stealing their stuff. It's just interesting. And like, when people do get upset about, about you stealing their stuff, it's scripted and so even if you're in stealth, they'll still come and uh, get onto you. I guess the, uh, the takeaway from this rant is that this game was not designed for, um, whatchamacallit, being a stealthy thief character. Which makes sense. There is only so much time to develop and, uh, so many things this game could potentially be, so. You gotta restrict yourself a little bit and not try to do everything all the time because ultimately that will uh, take away from the overall quality of the game as a whole. Okay, I'm lost. Uh, this just... No, no, no comments about how I get lost even with maps. It's... I don't have a good sense of direction, alright? And it's... Well, if it isn't the one who stole the Ebonhawk. Not so smug now, are you? You little thief. 
Don't be a fool. Atris stole the ship and the droid, says you. <laughs> Your behavior core. They didn't memory wipe you, did they? It wasn't your fault they took the ship, T3. Hold on. What information are you talking about? Why would she want what's in your memory core? Uh, let's get you back to the ship, then we can talk more. We'll see you at the Ebon Hawk. T3 loves me too. I'm just getting light side points all around because I can't force myself to be a dick to my companions. Like, it's one thing to kill some rando, but just being mean to my companions for no reason, that's just. eh. Okay, there's one. Why have you approached me? Uh, never mind. One of these, Achani is different from the others, and I just have to figure out where she is hiding at the moment. Because I honestly don't know. Uh. Why have you approached me? Never mind. Um, no, uh, was she up here? Did I just miss her earlier? Like, I can run all the way up here. It's not a whole lot of point to it, because, uh... This door is cold to the touch, and there seems to be no conventional means of opening it. Ah, curious thing. What lies behind it? When I first met Atris, she emerged from this chamber. Did she? Perhaps it is a meditation chamber of some sort. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not gonna spend too, too long trying to find this one particular Achani, but it does bother me. Why have you approached me? Never mind. Because she has interesting dialogue and I don't know where she is. Ah. Why have you approached me? No. Uh. That's the one. You are the exile. The one Atris warned us about. And what did Atris say? She said... You betrayed the Jedi by going to war when it was forbidden to you. You turned on your masters, your teachings, and yourself. Oh? That is not all she says. She says you know nothing of loyalty to any cause except your own animal instincts. And she told us why you fell to the dark side. And why was that? Atris says that you fell to the dark side in the Mandalorian Wars when you gave in to your lust for battle. Once you tasted war, you could not give it up. So why didn't I keep fighting in the Jedi Civil War? Atris says, when the Dark Lord Revan returned to the Republic, you did not march with them because you had fallen so far, you could no longer feel the Force. Anything else? I believe that is the extent of her expressed feelings toward you. 
There are variations at times, but all rise from the same foundation. Expressed feelings. Yes, it is difficult sometimes for others to truly speak their heart or listen to it. The words often prove difficult, or they do not come at all. And what do you think Atrus Heart says? Without having seen you and Atrus fight, I cannot say. Battle is a pure form of expression. It is heart and discipline, reduced to movement and motion. If I fought Atrus, then that might make the truth come out? Perhaps. It may prove truer than conversing with words. In battle, the words are swept away, giving way to actions. Mercy, sacrifice, anger, fear. These are pure moments of expression. I would like to ask you something. You may ask. You look different than the other women here. I honor the face of my mother. It is not something spoken of in the company of others. I apologize. I meant no offense. There is no need to apologize. You were merely remarking on something that you saw. There is no wrong in that. Is it a sensitive subject? It is not a sensitive subject, but a subject that requires trust. There is no such trust between you and I, and such trust takes time. Uh, let me ask you something else. You may ask. Why does Atris allow me to walk freely? I could kill you all easily. I am aware of this. I do not doubt your combat prowess, as my half-sisters do. There are many who went to war against the Mandalorians, and few returned. You were one of them. Remember that if you seek to challenge me. I will, Exile. In truth, I do wish to challenge you. What? Why? The Ichani believe you cannot truly know the heart of another unless you meet them in battle. I would very much like to know your nature. But now is not the time. Perhaps my sisters could challenge you, but not I. And not here. Never mind. I'll be going now. Before you go, Exile, question for you, if I may ask it. You have touched the Force. What does it feel like? It is a difficult thing to describe. Please, I wish to know. It's like a current that passes through you and carries you with it to all the places it touches. It is like a cloud, a mist that drifts from living creature to creature, set in motion by currents and eddies. It is the eye of the storm, the passions of all living things turned into energy, into a chorus. It is the rising swell at the end of life, the promise of new territories and new blood, the call of new mysteries in the dark. I see. Thank you both. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge with me. If you have any further questions in the future, seek me out and ask them. Why did I get dark side? Oh, because I threatened her. <laughs> uh, that's that's gonna be a it's gonna be a running trend with this LP, I think. <laughs> what bad thing did I do this time? Oh, maybe I shouldn't have blown up a planet. <laughs> uh... Good to know I wasted a lot of time running around when uh, she was right there. Hey, look, there's the ship. Huzzah.
Onward! To victory! Or a lot of death. Probably a lot of death, really. Like ultimate victory, sure, but uh may have mentioned before I'm not exactly good at this game. I'm just familiar with it. Can I get around the Ebon Hawk? No. No, I cannot. It's a convenient little wall here for no reason. Yeah, anyway. We shall carry on our journey. This is the loading ramp to the Ebon Hawk. Once aboard, you'll be leaving the Telos Polar Academy for good. Enter the Ebon Hawk. But I want to come back and visit! Well, now that we're off that Dejaric board of a planet, I say we burn sky until we see lines. What's with T3? What are you talking about? You downloaded Atris Archives. What is the machine saying? He said there was a hollow record of my trial in Atris Records. We seem to have found it. Do you know why we have called you here? Whatever your reasons, speak them or let me go. As Revan summoned you, so have you come full circle to return to the Jedi. Why did you defy us? The Jedi are guardians of the peace and have been for centuries. This call to war undermines all that we have worked for. Is Revan your master now? Or is it the horror you wrought at Malachor that has caused you to see the truth at last? The truth is the Mandalorians had to be stopped or Catless would have died. You refuse to hear us. You have shut us out. And so, have shut yourself to the galaxy. We feel that your true understanding of what happened at Malachor V will only happen in time, and it cannot happen here, near the battlegrounds where you fought. You are exiled, and you are a Jedi no longer. There is one last thing. Your lightsaber. Surrender it to us. defiance on that one. You were correct, Kavar. When she was here, I felt it. It was as if she was not there, more like an echo. Revan's influence has grown amongst the youngest of the Order. He speaks to their passions, not their sense. The war has touched them. Many of them have found themselves in the war against the Mandalorians. It is as I feared, and I fear that we have played into the hands of the enemy. We have not lost a Jedi this day. You felt it. She has lost herself. She is no Jedi. She walked Revan's path, but she was not strong enough. I fear it is our teachings that may have led Revan to choose the path he did. We are not the ones who taught him. We take responsibility, Atris, not cast blame. The choice of one was the choice of us all. Revan's teacher intended no harm, and Revan had many teachers since. Yet they all stem from the same source. Her teachings violated the Jedi Code and lead all who listen to the dark side, as they did the exile. You are wrong. 
The dark side is not what I sensed in the exile. Surely the rest of you felt it as well. That emptiness we felt. She has changed. Whatever that wound was, it was of the dark side. We should not have let her depart. She will simply join Revan again, or perhaps worse. What would you have done with her, Atris? Be mindful of your feelings. This is not Revan who stood before you. This one walks a different path. No, although that may come in time. We let her go because we must. Where she travels, she carries her destination with her. Malachor V should have been her grave. You saw it in her walk, and in the Force. It was as if she was already dead. No, not death. Many battles remain for that one, if what we have seen is true. But the future is a shifting thing, and she cuts like a blade through it. We should have told her the truth. A Jedi deserves to know. No good would have come from it, even if what you believe was true. There is still the matter of Revan, and such truths could leave us vulnerable on two fronts. Perhaps in many years we will call her before us and explain what happened to her, and how she may be healed. Until then, she must accept her journey. But she may never discover the truth, and she will never know why we cast her out. And that is the future we must accept. Those Jedi sure like their secrets, don't they? Those last few moments after my trial, I had no idea. If you find anything else, let me know. Atrus has a list of all the missing Jedi. Sure, display it. I knew all those Jedi Masters. A strange coincidence. It is no coincidence. There is some larger plan at work here, and we are walking into it. This is too convenient to be anything but a trap. Fine, then I say we go somewhere and hide. General, is there a reason you don't carry a lightsaber anymore? It was taken from me. That's not your lightsaber anymore. That belonged to someone who served Revan in the wars, not the person you are now. You could build another one, if you wanted to, but you know that. Do you think I can't build one? I don't know, General. But whatever the reason, you should put it behind you. I know this. A lightsaber is part of who you are. Without it, you're not complete. Very well. To begin with, there are some parts I'll need. I think I can help you out there. I happen to know the parts you need. Since when did you become an expert on lightsabers? I spent a lot of time around Jedi during the war. None of them would let me take their lightsaber apart, but I did learn about their construction. We need a power cell, emitter matrix, lens and focusing crystal. Though I have to admit the crystal is beyond my means. Never did understand them. Those parts are fairly common. Though a Jedi once told me that it's best if your lightsaber reflects you. And if it is constructed of things that identify it as your own. Just bring the parts to me before you get started building it. I'll make sure they're usable. For the last time, no. Because you're programmed to force your opponent to go first, and nothing will convince me the computer doesn't cheat. Even if I didn't have to go first and somehow I didn't suspect you of counting cards, I still wouldn't play with a trash compactor. Mm. 
Yeah? How many credits? <laughs> All I'm saying is that you've gone for a long time without a memory wipe. Most droids behave erratically under those circumstances. I know that, but I'm fixing everything else around here, so I may as well take a look at you, too. What was that? That's what I'm talking about. That is not normal droid behavior. What's going on here? I am not pushing you around. I just wanted to see if there was anything I could do to upgrade your functionality. <laughs> don't, don't bully T3. <laughs> don't worry, Bader probably knows what he's doing. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Good. Now let's get started. You wouldn't guess it from the outside, but it looks like you've been through a lot. I'll bet. I'm all done with you. If anything comes loose, let me know and I'll put it back in place. T3 has received a permanent plus two bonus to his constitution. Yay! Alright. Yeah, life saved for crafting and Lost Jedi. Yeah. And there we have the uh, main thrust of the game. And let me just go put something into HK. Yep. There we go. Step away. Alright, so how many, how many more bits does he need? Droid chassis and droid processor. Okay. Cool. We're halfway there. Um, how many of the lightsaber parts do I have? Uh, I found a fixture for the industry style, but still need an emitter and lens fixtures. Okay, that's easy enough. Um, yeah. I think I'm gonna call it there for this episode. Next episode we can go around and talk to people, generally get a feel for our crew, and then decide on where we're going. I already have a pretty good idea of where I want to go, but uh, I will keep that to myself for now. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again in about two days.